Peter and I are 500 feet above the Coral Sea off the northeast coast of Queensland, Australia, and we're approaching the largest living structure on Earth. This is such a massive reef, the largest in the world, it can be observed from outer space. What we see below us, the Great Barrier Reef, is actually made up of 3,000 mini reefs. And it is a World Heritage Site, so our children will get to come here someday, hopefully, and experience what we are now. And there's a lot of conservation work being done to keep this place as intact as possible, and I can obviously see why. This is awesome. Yeah. To get a look at the reef from the surface, we decide to touch down on a tiny sand island. Fragile landforms like this shift, shrink, or even vanish with the tide. Oh, is this where we're going, maybe? I hope so, because we are descending rather quickly. Okay, we're going down, we're going down. We're about to land, we're here. There we go. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Oh. Oh, look at that. <laughs> and there is not a footprint in the sand. <laughs> oh my gosh! Wow, look at this. We've been to some remote places, but this really is it. I can't believe I'm back here. The first time I ever filmed underwater was the Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom, right here on the Great Barrier Reef. The exceptional clarity of the Coral Sea of Australia is a great aid to the researchers who enter this unusual marine world. Oh, you're returning. I am. Wow. Well, do you think that it's changed? It looks the same on the surface, but I know it's been challenged below the surface. So I can't wait to get underwater again, a good look at the reef. I can't either. So I think we should get off of this tiny sand island before the tide comes yeah, the in. the tide is coming in, so let's move out. Let's go. <laughs> Today, we'll do more than just admire the Great Barrier Reef from above. We're here to meet the devoted conservationists striving to preserve it below the surface. Our next stop is a helipad situated approximately 30 miles offshore, providing researchers and tourists access to more reef, a vibrant coral habitat. From there, we board a dive boat to meet master reef guide Leia Dawes to get an overview of this remarkable ecosystem. We're here at the Great Barrier Reef. It's over 1,500 miles long. If you were to put all of the reef together, it's about the same size as the country of Italy. There's different types of coral reefs around the world. This one is a barrier reef. So barrier reefs are situated on the edge of the continental shelf. It acts as a barrier to waves, to wind, to strong tides. Tourism provides vital economic support for sustaining the Great Barrier Reef by funding conservation efforts, raising public awareness, and motivating global actions to protect this unique marine ecosystem. A lot of people think tourism isn't helpful for the reef, but because of its size, there's actually probably less than 3% of the reef that's visited by tourists. I've snorkeled several times in my life, but I have never in my life seen coral. Wow. Yeah, so this is, this is a big day for me, for sure. Master reef guides like Leia specialize in leading visitors on up-close tours of the reef. I couldn't wait to get in the water. We suit up, board a zodiac, and plunge into one of the most biodiverse habitats in the world. Nearly 600 species of corals shape the Great Barrier Reef, each with its own unique appearance. They share these waters with 1,600 species of fish, 30 kinds of whales and dolphins, six species of sea turtles, and thousands of mollusks and invertebrates like these quick-to-hide Christmas tree worms. We even spot a giant clam, the largest species of clam on Earth. Most of the corals here are hard reef-building corals, some shaped like rocks, others like tiny trees. We also swim above soft corals that sway with the waves, resembling underwater plants. Corals are part animal, 
part plant and part mineral. Tiny tentacled animals called coral polyps catch food drifting in the water. Inside the polyps live algae, which create additional food from sunlight and give corals their beautiful colors. And to protect itself, the polyp secretes a hard calcium carbonate skeleton. As millions of polyps build their skeletons on top of each other, these colonies create the large structures we call coral reefs.